Legend of Total War here, and today we've got a community-based video um, centered around Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires that I would really love you guys to uh, to get involved with and get behind. Now, normally I don't like my videos being posted on Reddit or other other uh, forums, but I give you guys permission to just do whatever you want with them. So if you want to get some karma farm and going for yourself, you know, go for it, repost it, to go, for, just do whatever you want, okay? Um, and I'm hoping that if you're watching this and you're not a big fan of, of me as a channel, I'm hoping that in, for this one video here that you just put that aside and just hear me out because everyone in the Total War community will benefit um, if this goes ahead. Okay, so the premise here is that Immortal Empires is the quintessential experience for Total War Warhammer. I think most of us uh, who play Total War Warhammer 3 can agree to that. This is the best experience for for um for, for total war warhammer you could you could also argue that it's mortal empires warhammer 2 but you know on one way or another you want the combined map right um and that currently in order to play immortal empires you have to own warhammer 1 2 and 3 now for those of us that have been with total war warhammer since the beginning we knew that was going to be the case creative assembly have been very straightforward with that we knew that was going to be how we had to do things and it just wasn't a problem now the problem here arises with new players New players that haven't been around, that aren't part of the community, that don't know what is the deal with Total War Warhammer 3. And that the proposed idea is to make it better for newer players, um, or even make it possible for newer players to, to get to play Immortal Empires, that the requirement of owning Warhammer 2 and 1 be dropped and that you only need to own Warhammer 3 in order to play Immortal Empires. However, the content should still be locked behind uh, DLC. So for example, if you only own Warhammer 3, then you should be able to play the Warhammer 3 Lords, right? Scarbrand, Kugath, um, Cinch, uh, Kairos Fateweaver, Kislev, Cathay, all those guys, right? Uh, the Demon Prince, Daniel. They should be available too, but you can't play um, Karl Franz unless you have purchased Warhammer 1. You can encounter Karl Franz if you play as those Warhammer 3 Lords. You can go and fight him and defeat him, but you won't be able to play as him. Um, you won't be able to play as Tyrion unless you own Warhammer 2. You won't be able to play as Ikaclaw unless you own Warhammer 2 and, and the Prophet and Warlock DLC. Now the thing is here, if you do things that way... If you do things that way, it benefits everyone, and I'll explain why. Even Creative Assembly, I'm sure a lot of people, I can see them saying, oh, but if they do that, then Creative Assembly loses out on all the money from Warhammer 1 and 2. Not necessarily. I don't think so. Maybe, maybe if the Realms of Chaos campaign had been a very good experience, maybe then they wouldn't need to do this, but that's not how this has turned out. Unfortunately, uh, the Realms of Chaos campaign, which is an advertisement for the main campaign here, and for to get people to go and purchase Warhammer 1 and 2, it completely fails at doing that. It is a, it's a huge red flag for a lot of new players. Now, not everyone, but for a lot of players, right? So, um, when you play the Realms of Chaos campaign, you don't encounter those, those factions, and it's just overall, a, it's just not a great campaign, right? Let me ask you guys, how many of you that play Total War Warhammer 3 and have access to Immortal Empires, how many of you choose to play Realms of Chaos on a regular basis, or really at all? Me personally, I haven't touched the Realms of Chaos since Immortal Empires came out. I haven't touched it, and I have no intention of touching it ever again, because this is the worst experience for Total War, at least for me, that I've ever played. And I love Total War Warhammer, right? But I hate this campaign more than I hate Rome 2, more than I hate Total War Attila, more than I hate Empire Total War, and I hate Empire Total War, okay? Empire Total War nearly made me leave Total War entirely, right? I don't like it at all. This video is not about that, so don't, <laughs> don't, let's not get delve too much into it. But it's a terrible experience, right? That's why this game had mixed and negative reviews for a really long time. The positive reviews are coming in for the Immortal Empires experience, right? Now, how is it that Creative Assembly would benefit from doing things this way, right? Because currently, I don't think that new players are being injected that often into uh, into Total War. This is not a a game that requires a, a subscription method. In order for Creative Assembly to continue to make money from Total War Warhammer, they have to sell DLC. They've got to sell old DLC, they've got to sell new DLC. In order to do that, they have to get the player count up. Currently, Warhammer 3 player count, like if I just pop into Steam here at the moment, all right, I just pop into it at the moment. It's currently sitting at 18,754. Now this is currently, it's very early in the morning, but this is like, usually around peak time for players so it's been declining a little bit now 18,000 uh, players 
right? If that was the average, which it isn't, it, it usually goes down to 10,000 during non-peak times. I've been monitoring it a lot since the game came out, really. So it gets between 10,000 and 20,000 players. And this is on a Friday night, right? Uh, sorry, Thursday night. Um, and uh, if the player count is, is between those values, it's actually at the lower end of what Warhammer was achieving throughout its entire life cycle, right? Now, of course... We're in a bit of a content lull at the moment, and I know that those numbers will go back up in four months, you know, when the next DLC comes out, because patches don't do very much, right? They, it's slight bump, it's more or less a dead cat bounce. Um, patches don't do very much, it, it requires a DLC. So we've got four months um, until the next big spike of players, and um, typically speaking, it's not doing as well as what Warhammer 2 was doing. So if, you, if Creative Assembly wants to get people to purchase Warhammer 1 and 2, which I don't think they are doing right now, right? The best advertisement for it is for get, to get them to play Immortal Empires, not to play the Realms of Chaos. Now, Creative Assembly could nullify this entire video by tomorrow releasing a patch that makes the Realms of Chaos just chef's kiss, you know, awesome. But it's been out now for like 10 months. They, the last few patches didn't even touch the Realms of Chaos. This is leaning towards being abandoned wear. And this is typically what Creative Assembly does. You know, I've been around here for a while, and unfortunately, uh, a very cynical opinion can be a form of Creative Assembly once you've sort of realized their behavior patterns. Um, they can be a very ruthless business, um, and that's why they are probably one of the, the, well, the biggest developer in the UK. But we can look towards their history to see how they're going to act in the, in the future. Three Kingdoms. They had more content planned for development for Three Kingdoms that got canned. Why did they can it? They didn't expressly say it, but we know why. The, the DLC wasn't selling as well. That's because the DLC was crap, right? For, for, the, for the most part, for, um, for Three Kingdoms. And so it wasn't meeting expectations. And so they canned it, and they're making a whole new game, right? Uh, for, for Three Kingdoms time period, just probably recycling assets. Thrones of Britannia, the perfect example of abandonware. They clearly had plans for more DLC for Thrones of Britannia, but because it was received with just absolute apathy, it only has one DLC, the Blood Pack, which you can get for free if you own uh, Attila's Blood Pack. They have a DLC button in the main menu, and it only has one DLC in it. They clearly had plans for more DLC. Now, those are extreme cases. Now, we can also go in the opposite direction and tell you about experiences where things exceed their expectations and how that benefits you guys. Did you guys know, and most of you probably don't know this, uh, that the, uh, the original um, plan for Warhammer 3 did not include Kislev and Cathay didn't include them um, they added Kislev and Cathay into the plans for Warhammer 3 because Warhammer 2's DLC sold above their expectations so it is a good thing if new players get involved in this so the point that I'm trying to make here is that if you're one of those kind of players that sits there being I really enjoy Warhammer 3 screw everyone else as long as I'm having fun I don't really care blah, 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 blah. if you've got that kind of attitude okay keep this in mind if Creative Assembly cans Warhammer 3, which there's probably not going to happen anytime soon, right? You, you, This game is supposed to have at least four years worth of, of DLC, right? Um, and probably include Indian Kuresh. And that's if it sort of meets expectations. But if it goes below expectations, I guarantee you they'll can it. Not in any danger of it at the moment, but it, it can happen, right? Um, but on the alternate, if it exceeds expectation and Creative Assembly is making a lot of money from it, why would they stop developing it? Do you want Araby to be added into the game? There's room for them in the, in the campaign map. They'll, they'll do it, right? If they feel like they can make money out of it and there's a really high player base, if, they think, if it's profitable, they'll do it. Do you want Nippon to be added? Okay, if you want Nippon to be added, you better be damned sure that these these uh, DLCs have to exceed expectations. Do you want Halflings to be added? You know, they'll add all the stuff that they know is going to sell. Nagash, Thankwall, all that kind of stuff. That's that's a guarantee because they know that stuff will sell. But the stuff that's a bit iffy, that's on the fringes. You know, do you want the Amazons to be added? There's no way that they're ever going to add the Amazons. 
if the game doesn't sell above their expectations. So the way to do that is to make sure that new blood is introduced into this game on a fairly frequent level. Now the problem here is that new blood is turned away from Total War Warhammer 3 because of the Realms of Chaos experience. Now, here's the thing. This could very easily be mitigated if Creative Assembly would, um, well, for one thing, fix the Realms of Chaos, but also if they would recommend Warhammer 2 as the first Total War game. Sorry, Total War Warhammer game. Because let's be real here, between the base games of 1, 2, and 3, Warhammer 2's Vortex campaign is the better of the three, by a very large margin. So if people were introduced into Warhammer 2 first, then they'd be more likely to purchase all three games and eventually get Immortal Empires. But that's just not how Creative Assembly have marketed this at all, which I think has been a gigantic mistake, and while we've seen pretty big decline in Total War player numbers, which none of us benefit from unless you're actually rooting for, uh, for for total war to go under which you know say what you want about me i have never rooted for total wars co complete collapse or anything like that i've only ever wanted it to to achieve the best it can to see these games become amazing you know absolute masterpieces of of, of strategy content um but i don't think that just blindly um like praising creative assembly for doing a bad job is the way to go about it because all we're doing is tricking new players into buying a game that they're probably not going to enjoy. I think that we need to make Creative Assembly actually make some changes, right? Because it's not a perfect game, but Immortal Empires is the quintessential experience, right? So how are we going to go about that? Am I going to sit here and complain and like cause community outrage? No, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is start a petition. Now, this petition here is not meant as a, as a gun to Creative Assembly's head. It's not saying... Uh, make Immortal Empires available to everyone that owns Warhammer 3, or else I will uh, quit Total War. No, I'm going to be here no matter what. You know, uh, I, I have no intention of leaving. I'm still going to be seeing this through to the very end, one way or another. But the purpose of this is to try to convince them, like, as a, as a uh, request, not a threat. Please make this more um, available. P reduce the barrier of entry to newer players. Um, so I've got a bit of information there. Um, feel free to, you know, if you don't agree with it as well, just, you know, let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to have a discussion about this because this is a community thing. I don't want to be dictating to you guys about what you should or should not believe. Um, but I, I strongly believe that all of us benefit from this. Whether you're new to the Total War experience, of course it's going to benefit you if you're new to it. You have to pay less to play the, the better experience. Uh, it's going to benefit veteran players because I think that it will mean a longer life cycle for for Total War Warhammer 3, and I think it'll benefit Creative Assembly because I, I strongly believe that they will actually make more money. Because sometimes, charging more for things is not the best way to make money. Sometimes there's a happy medium. You don't want to give it away for free, but you want to make it so palatable. You want to incentivize people to actually do it. This is why I don't do premium content on this channel, because I don't believe that's the best way to, to make a profit on this channel. I think, like just coming from my own business point of view, that by making as much stuff as easy to access as possible, so that all of it's free, I actually end up making more money. So sometimes charging less can make you more money because you sell more in the long run. And we've got to come at it with Creative Assembly from a business point of view because that's the only way they're going to hear it, okay? We have to convince them that doing this will make them more money. And if they'll do it, why wouldn't they? Because that's what they're there for. You know, they don't care about Total War or, or uh, Warhammer. They just want to make money. You know, the people that are actually making the decisions I'm talking about, you know, the Creative Assembly executives. Now, another thing that I've learned is that... Um, Creative Assembly will never, ever, 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 ever bend to the whims of one person. No matter how much influence that person has, I've learned that lesson this year. Um, it doesn't matter how much sense I make to them, how much I scream at them, they will never, ever listen to me as one person. However, I can get Creative Assembly to make changes through the only power that I actually have, and that's through you guys. You guys have all of the power, and you always have had all of the power. I actually have no power the only thing i have is a means to reach a lot of people that's my power but you, the power is in your hands in each individual one of you for each signature that you guys put on this and it only costs you nothing and takes you what, a minute but for each signature that you put in there it acts as a building up of wave of of support for this that Creative Assembly can see and hopefully make a decision on. Now, if we only get 100 signatures, Creative Assembly will ignore it. If we get 1,000 signatures, Creative Assembly will ignore it. 10,000 signatures, probably ignored it. So we're, I'm probably asking for a lot. Uh, I'm not going to put any specific goal, but the more signatures we get on this, 
and I hopefully I've convinced you, and if I haven't, please explain to me why I haven't convinced you so that I can I can be better at arguing this point. Um, so that this can be made more palatable for newer players. Because they're the ones that are primarily going to benefit from it, and that will all benefit from that afterwards. Okay? So there'll be a link in the description for this. Please post it around wherever you can. I'm relying on you guys to, to try to make this happen. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that that is a petition. It is not a threat. Creative Assembly is under absolutely no obligation to listen to it. Even if it got a million signatures, Creative Assembly can just decide that, nope, what they've decided was the best way and they're going to continue forward, screw everyone else. Um, that is entirely up to them. But I think that experience and history has shown that Creative Assembly absolutely bend to the whims of the greater community, right? An example of this is the Backspace exploit, right? Those of you who are remember, uh, were back in Warhammer 2, it was like maybe two years ago now. There was an exploit that's been in Total War games just about forever, um, right? Where if during the end turn an enemy army was moving and you pressed Backspace, you would actually get them to stop moving. And so you could basically halt all enemy movement so they just couldn't attack you. It was a massive game-breaking exploit that completely trivialized the game. I've got a video on that if you want to go check it out somewhere out there. Um, and it was in the game for years. I found out about it and uh, I made a video on it and basically a couple of weeks later Creative Assembly patched it out. Okay, Now that could be a coincidence but that's not the first time and only time that that's happened. Anytime that I've created some kind of community outrage or some sort of massive uh, wave of support towards doing something, Creative Assembly usually bends to it because at the end of the day they want to make you happy so that you'll buy more stuff from them. I got no problem with them making huge amounts of profit. But I just want everybody in the community to be happy because when you guys are happy, that actually makes me happy. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why I've been so miserable this year because so much of my audience has been miserable this year. And I think that this is a great way to end the year on a strong note because we've had such a crappy year. We really have. Um, this word, like just from, just from what I offer to Creative Assembly, like I'll offer them... Um, like a full pardon for all of the stuff that I have like grudges against them um, if they do this uh, like I'll forgive them for all of that if they go ahead with this because this benefits everyone um, but yeah I'll forgive them for everything um, that I have grudges on them for um, if, if they go ahead and do it otherwise you know time will tell so that's in this one here guys um, spread this out don't forget to to um to sign it that's really important i need you guys to sign it um the more signatures we get the better i really hope this happens because i think that everyone will benefit from it um and there's another thing that i i really want to say that i think is really important and that we all need each other that's so important um each of us even if we don't play the same way um or have the same values we we all should support each other that this community benefits greatly. If it's one thing that happened in Warhammer 2 is that the, the community was really supportive of one another. And that's something that has mostly been lost. I've seen that in the um, in the forums a lot lately. People are just attacking each other, being hostile to one another. And it's very unhelpful. And I think that if we all showed each other a lot more kindness, um, that's something that I've learned over the years, that being hostile to people as a first response is probably the worst way to go about things. And that being kind to everyone and empathizing with them and um, trying to help others get what they want um, is a is a good way for this community to thrive. And hopefully this is a step in uh, the right direction for doing that because I think we've had a, a very much a step backwards on, at least in terms of community. The community was a lot stronger the past two years than it has been, sorry, the previous two years than it has been in 2022. Um, so let's try to at, at least end 2022 on a good note and start 2023 on a super strong note. Speaking of which, at the end of this year, um, regardless of how many subs we get to, I'm going to be doing a 24-hour charity live stream. That's going to happen no matter what. We're still organizing the charities. We're going to be doing multiple chari uh, doing the drive for multiple chari charities this time. Um, I'll release information on that fairly soon. But if we hit 455,000 subscribers by the time of that live stream, that's on December 31st, uh, the campaign that I have intended to do, which is a fan favorite and one of my favorites, you all know what it's going to be, but if it is that campaign, um, sorry, if we hit 455k um, subscribers, it'll be a This Is Total War campaign. Now, the funny thing is, is that I've done a This Is Total War campaign with this in Warhammer 2, and it is possibly universally um, the best performing live stream campaign 
of the history of this channel. And that was for Warhammer 2. So we intend to do that in Warhammer 3. Um, if we hit 455k subscribers, which we're very close to doing. Yesterday, as an example, when I asked for subs, you guys subscribed in such a large number, I gained 700 subs. Okay, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe, okay? So, yeah. That being said, um, if you don't want to subscribe, and if you don't want to... Um, if you don't want to put your signature here, just keep in mind that I appreciate you one way or another. Even if you disagree with me, even if you don't like me, okay? We're all part of uh, the community, and I appreciate you, and I respect your opinions. Um, even if they diverge from my own, even if your playstyle diverges from my own, and I think a bit more of that will go a long way with this community. So, appreciate you guys. That's the end of this one. Hopefully we can make a change, but it, the ball is entirely in your court and in Creative Assembly's court, because I have absolutely no power from this point on. So it's all up to you guys. Appreciate you, and I'll see you next time. Later, guys.